Hello guys, in this video I wanted to cover really quickly how to tie up your animations with other stuff happening in the gameplay. Let's imagine we want two things to happen while our character here fishes. First, we want the bucket behind him to get filled once he catches some fish. And secondly, we want to play a particle every time the fishing rod leaves the water. In my scene, I have a character with the fisherman script attached and an animator. The animator is really simple and just stays in idle until the trigger is called plays the hook animation and then it goes back to idle. This sequence happens every 5 seconds. Let's work on the barrel full of fish first. Now, the simplest way to achieve this would be to just change the sprite from the animator, right? Well, that might be the easiest, but that's not the best solution. What happens if you also want to play a sound or increment a score or do any ton of other things based on that animation? It will get really messy really fast. Let's see a much better solution for this. In our fisherman script, we're going to be adding a new function. Let's go public void bot something. What we'll do here is just trigger an event. We're going to create an event here. It's going to be a public static action on caught something. What we're going to do here is just if it's not null, and just invoke it. So if anyone is subscribed to this event, they will, they will get a callback from here. So in our barrel, you can just go on enable, just go to fisherman on caught something, build barrel. We're just gonna unsubscribe from the event and disable. And now we go here in fish build barrel. We're just gonna add to references, so we're going to add a public by renderer to the barrel image, and a public sprite barrel. So, here, what we're going to do is just barrel image dot sprite equals barrel. Okay, so to recap, every time this method gets called, it's going to trigger an event on caught something. And the barrel is subscribed to that event, so once it gets triggered, we'll just fill the barrel with the fish. The final piece of the puzzle here is to tie our animation to the cut something method, which is super simple to do. So back into Unity, we're inside of animation here, and we want to go in the timeline up to the point where we want the event to be called. So we look good right here. Just right click, add animation event. And here in the function, you're going to see everything that is in the same game object as the animation. Since we have the fisherman, we have the, anima the animator and the fisherman script here. All of the public methods are going to be available here. So we just go down here and just click on cut something. Also, make sure in the barrel that you assign all of the references needed for the script to work. In this case, we're just going to assign the field barrel and the sprite renderer. We press play and wait for 5 seconds. Once the fisherman catches something, we should see the barrel getting full. And yeah, it's exactly at the time we wanted it to be. Now, we also want to play a small particle that I created here every time the fisherman lifts his rod out of the water. We're going to do a very similar approach here. So we're going to go to public particle system, hook particle. We're just going to create a new method here. So public void lifting rod I will just do hook particle dot play or dot pause dot play we then assign our hook particle to the variable in the fisherman script go back to the animation hook animation and we're gonna do it right about there we want to again add an animation event click on the small gizmo there and just lift him rod we're now playing the game, which you see both things happening exactly at the correct time. So yeah, we can see the particle every time the rod is being lifted out of the water and the fish getting put in the barrel. Working with events is going to give you a much cleaner code base to work with and also it's much more extensible than just tying it all up in one animator. I really hope you enjoyed the video and found it helpful. If you want to see more about the development of this game, check out my devlog in the description below. See you guys next time and thanks for watching.